But I want to turn now um, to the White House with reaction today to the devastation at Allen, Texas. The president, of course, honoring the victims, but also calling on Congress to send him legislation. But it's not the first time he's made this call. Here is some of what he had to say back in April following a shooting in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, he said this, it's long past time that we require safe storage of firearms, require background checks for all gun sales, eliminate gun manufacturers' immunity from liability. We can and must do these things now. And then fast forward to February, after a shooting in Tate County, Mississippi, quote, we need, need common sense gun law reforms. And then once again, that same month after the shooting at Michigan State University, quote this, action is what we owe to those grieving today in Michigan and across America. I want to get right to NBC's Mike Memoli following um, all this from the White House. It's as if the White House at this point can cut and paste every three or so days a statement that they need to release on the most recent mass shooting um, in this country. And every single time this president is imploring lawmakers to act, right, to ban assault rifles. Talk to us more about what we're hearing from the White House and what they can actually do. Yeah, yes, but it's really interesting the way you laid that out because it feels like I've had this same conversation with you or another anchor or you with another reporter every time there is a mass shooting. What more can be done in Washington? Well, as the president is putting it in this new statement that the th tweeted thoughts and prayers from Republicans are not enough, that there are t too many families that have this empty seat at the table uh, and that Republicans need to do more. And what that speaks to, I think, is interesting here, because at every turn this year, we have heard President Biden in public really lean into this idea of an assault weapons ban. That's really a departure somewhat, because you weren't seeing that certainly 20 years ago when the assault weapons ban expired, 10 years ago in the wake of Newtown or even five years ago. But it is something that the president talks about often because there is this sense of a movement now behind gun reforms, gun safety measures, that has turned into a real political force that rivals the National Rifle Association, which has, as the Democrats see it, such a hold on the Republican Party. So the one reason the president is leaning in so hard is because he thinks this needs to be a voting issue, that it could be a powerful issue. And he's seen it play a significant role in sort of these battleground suburban districts that might mean the difference in swinging control back to Democrats uh, potentially in the next election or maybe even helping with the Senate, although the math is much tougher there. What is also worth noting, Yasmin, though, is the White House often points out the president did sign the most significant gun safety measure uh, in some time last year, doing things like promoting the use of red flag laws. The president also went to Los Angeles earlier this year. I was covering this trip where he signed an executive order, and gun safety advocates were telling me that there is the real potential because of what he's asked his Justice Department to do, to review some of the language in that new legislation, to potentially all but close the gun show loophole. That would be a significant step wow. in the right direction to at least expand background checks. We're still waiting for that review to come from the Justice Department. They have a few months to do it. But if and, and when that is followed through, uh, that would be a significant thing that the president would tout as doing more here, even if Congress is not acting. Melanie, let me ask you this real quick, because you brought up a really good point. It's something that I'm thinking about. We've never been at this point, right, in our nation's history with so many mass casualty um, attacks, right, with these mass shootings happening, with more and more people dying, children, right, especially. And I'm wondering if now more than ever, right, the Biden administration, as they're looking ahead to 2024 and his reelection campaign, right, they're talking about campaigning on abortion. They're talking about campaigning, obviously, when it comes to the economy and how they talk about that. But is guns going to become a top issue on the trail, right, leading, heading into 2024, considering where we are and how people feel? Well, certainly we're in the early days of the Biden re-election campaign. We've seen some of the messaging coming so, so far, talking about January 6th, the fact that, as the president puts it, freedom itself is going to be on the ballot. Of course, he also wants to talk about his economic accomplishments. But I think back, Yasmin, to when I was covering the 2020 campaign, and just before COVID really did shut down the campaign, the last event that then-candidate Joe Biden did was with a coalition of gun safety groups mm. uh, in a suburban part of Ohio. This was ahead of the Ohio primary, but it was at a point when then-candidate Biden was beginning his pivot to the general election. So he was certainly signaling then what White House officials have told me, which is that they believe that this is a powerful issue mm. with an important voting coalition, those suburban mothers who have 
in historically trended a bit Republican, but have more recently been swinging very clearly towards Democrats. So I think you will see the, the White House, the Biden campaign ultimately lean into that issue. Mike Memoli, as always, my friend, thank you.